All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Taylor with Scott Roy Marketing. Today we're going over direct mailers. So we're going to go through creating a direct mail campaign in command. And I'm going to go over how to configure your targeted uh, recipients for who to send those out to. And if we have time to go over a second example, I'll also show you guys real quick um, how to target your database as well with a direct mail. Feel free as we go to throw any questions you have in the chat. I'm gonna do my best to watch for those to come in and answer as we go. I'll also revisit any questions I might've missed at the end of class. I'm also going to put in the chat our support email. That way, if you have any questions that are a little more specific for your circumstances or if your system is acting, acting a little wonky, we can always go in and troubleshoot if you email our support team and let them know what's going on. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get logged into command. So if you're not familiar, that's agent.kw.com. And then once you are here, this is the main command login or the main command homepage, I should say. We're gonna go to campaigns, which is the icon on the left-hand side that looks like a megaphone. You can also click on the KW in the upper left-hand corner and that will actually pop out the menu names if you're not familiar yet with what the icons are. And then here you have your main campaigns dashboard. So this has something on all different types of campaigns that you can create down below. There's also tips and training. So you can always go over those if you want. And these are from KW. And we're gonna go to direct mail and look at that specific campaign dashboard. So now each of these, you'll see an overview. So the name of the type of postcard you're creating, you'll have a preview the status. So this will either say draft processing if you have recently created one and sent it through or mailed the date that you created it, date that it was sent, if any leads have come back. And I'll show you guys how to track that when we actually create it, but you can add a QR code that leads to a landing page. So if a lead is captured based on using that QR code, it'll track that here. And then how many people received the postcard? And then the goal that you selected when you were creating it. So you can see all of those stats based on each postcard that you created. But then you'll also see some of those up here on the top where you can choose your time frame that you want to look into and see how many mailers you've sent out, how many people received them, how many leads came from them, and how much money you've spent on them. So it tracks that for you as well. There is a payment icon right here next to create campaign. If you go there, you'll be able to 
look at all of your spending based on your connected accounts. You'll start to see based on whether you've created Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads, how much you've spent on updating or excuse me, upgrading your command email, a MailChimp account, or real mailers. So these are going to be the stats for your direct mail campaigns. And I think this metric is cool that you have a way to export all of this into a spreadsheet. So if you're going over your finances, you can always export that data real easy under the payment section. All right, so now we're gonna walk through creating a campaign. So I select create campaign in the upper right hand corner. And direct mail. We do have additional classes on the other types of campaigns. So you can either come to one of those next classes that we teach or you can find our previous class recording on our YouTube channel. All right, so what we recommend if you're creating a direct mailer about a specific property, having some sort of way to identify that so you can easily see all of the marketing you're doing for that property. And I'm going to select advertise listing and then create campaign. Now that's going to pop open this property search function. It will default to active and only my listings. So when you're logged in as yourself, I'm logged in as Scott, so he doesn't actually have any listings that are syncing. But you may see your listings here if you're the primary listing agent. I'm going to default to all listings, all statuses, and then I'm going to search by MLS number. We found that this is more precise. There's less overlap with MLS number where if you are searching for property address, it's going to search for any variation of the property address that you're searching for. So you can get a lot more results that you have to filter through. So we just recommend MLS number. All right, so once you find that, we're going to select it. And then that brings us back to our editor here. You'll notice that our listing is connected, so you're going to start to see on the preview on the right-hand side that some of your property information is going to default to the template. Next, going to content. This is where you can actually pick a template that you want to use. For the sake of class, we're going to stick to the default templates within the system for both this example and if we have time to do a second one. If you are to create a custom template, let's say you made one in designs that you want to use, you can upload those here. However, formatting these, depending on the size that you're making, have to match exactly. So resizing can be a little finicky. We do have additional tip videos on our YouTube channel on how to help you resize those if you're wanting to use a custom template. Or you can email us to ask us for assistance in that support email. 
Uh, there's a question in the chat to create a campaign. I have to have an address. So for this example, we created um, the goal of advertising a listing. So that's going to pull a specific property. Um, so in that case, whether you're advertising a um, open house, it doesn't have to necessarily be your listing as long as you're following um, compliance protocols for how to market a property. Uh, then you're, as long as you have all the permissions you need, if you're not the listing agent, all that kind of stuff, um, the system won't prevent you from advertising. Like I selected someone else's listing right now. Um, but there are different goals where it's not property specific. Uh, so you can basically create it from blank, no property information um, if you don't want to. And we'll do that as a second example um, once we get through this template. So as you're looking at the templates, you'll notice there are sizes here. So a four by six, six by nine, or there's two different six by 11s. So if you select different ones, you'll notice that the preview changes on the right-hand side. Once we select the photo of the property, it'll be a little more clear how different these templates are. But you can select there. The size is also going to change your estimated order price. So keep that in mind. The bigger ones are likely going to cost more. Depends on how many you're buying and what budget you're trying to stick to. And then it's pulling all of the information here from the MLS. So we have listing price. And here you can get three different options for listing status. Again, because we chose um, advertised listing, that's going to default to these. And then that added that on our template here. And then here it is pulling bedrooms and bathrooms. You'll want to verify that this is marketed appropriately. There are sections for total bathrooms in the MLS or in some MLSs where counts like let's say this was three beds two and a half baths it might still pull in as three bathrooms but then you can manually update that if need be it just depends so you'll want to double check that that's um, advertised appropriately based on the way it pulls from the MLS now here we have the property description. It pulls in the entire property description from the MLS, but notice our character count right now. We've over doubled it. So if we look at the back where this is displaying, it is completely cut off. So you'll wanna make sure that this is updated. Maybe you'll want to list bullet points so everything is still there. Thank you. 
make sure we're under our character count. Although it is still cut off way up here, so I'm not sure what's going on with that on our preview, but we're going to go ahead and save that. Here we have the listing photo, so that's where we're going to choose. If you are the listing agent and you have the original images, you may want to upload that directly from your computer or wherever you have those saved, just so that the quality of the photo is the best possible quality that it is. If you toggle over to the listing images here, You'll notice each photo has a low resolution warning. It just loses some quality to the photo, syncing from MLS to KWLS and then KWLS to the campaign section. So it's just gonna warn you that the photo might not be as clear and crisp as it appears digitally. And that if you choose to utilize this photo, then it may not, the quality might turn out a little more pixely or blurry when it's actually printed and that you're releasing responsibility for that. So now just to show you guys how different the templates are, this is the compact template. This is what the default, the six by nine looks like. six by 11 modern and six by 11 contemporary. And then there's agent photo. So this information, the photo and the contact information is pulling from your marketing profile within your command settings. And the I know it's pulling just numbers. It doesn't have the format. So I deleted a number and added it so that it formatted it appropriately. Save. And now we have the check mark here on content. So now under market center, we have our office information. Again, pulling from the marketing profile. So we have the logo. And for you, that should be specific to the market center that you're working under. This looks like Scott has the generic Keller Williams logo. So yours should be specific for your office. And then we have the office information. Um, and don't mind me, I don't know this off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, and then it wants you to verify the address. So it tells you what you entered and then what the, the system is pulling. So I'm just gonna confirm that. Now targeting here, we have local targeting, so that is based on the property address. We want to advertise to the neighborhood that this home was just listed and the surrounding area. The other option is target my database. Again, on our next example, we can go over that. So we're gonna save that. And then here we have our estimated budget. 
So this is allowing you to choose, depending on the template, there may be different postage classes that you can choose from. And then you can also edit how many you wanna do. So if you wanna stay under a certain amount of money, you can always get close and then use the arrows. Or if you wanna send out a specific amount, you can always just type that in. We're gonna save that. So now on the left-hand side, we have everything checked and ready to go. Looking at our preview here. Here is the spot that I mentioned where you can add a QR code. So you just wanna to toggle on tracking. And then the landing page, you just come down here and you can pick any landing page that's connected to your KW site. So you can lead them right to your home. If you created a landing page with more information on this property, you can select that. And once you've selected that, you'll see it added that QR code here in the top corner. So when this is sent out, anyone that receives it that scans this and then enters their information on your website page, it will track that a new lead came in. You'll get a notification in command, and you should get a notification via email as well that someone registered on your website. And it'll track that it came from this mailer. So now we want to configure targeting. So we're going to go in there going to create the campaign. And we're just gonna let that load really quick. Okay, so now you'll notice the red dot, that's our listing property. So these are the surrounding area or surrounding homes that fit the criteria for our filtering. So this is where you can get more specific on targeting who's gonna receive this to hopefully give you a better return on your investment. I'm going to switch property type to single family. And it moved around some of these blue dots so that if there were any properties under multifamily, they're no longer selected, but our number to target did not change. So it just moved around who is going to receive it. And then filtering these down, you can just change all of this. And it's, I don't know why my mouse is freaking out. Sorry, guys. As you start to change these based on the market patterns you've seen in your area, you'll notice that some of these dots move around. That one was a drastic change, but it still kept all of the properties or the number of people that we're marketing to the same. And you can always change that here as well if you didn't want that many. Again, this is going to be 
whatever you see in your market in regards to how often people are moving, who you think might be looking, like that kind of thing. You can narrow that down here. We always recommend selecting send a copy to a company address. So that's going to send one of the postcards to you at the office so that you can see exactly what was sent out. Now let's say you've done all of your filtering and you know exactly who you want to target. But let's say you're also listing the house two doors down and you don't want them to get a postcard yet for their neighbor's property because you're going to be setting this up for theirs. You can select their address and remove. So now you'll, it might be hard to see actually, Let me zoom in. The dot is still there. So that tells you that they fit the criteria, but they are removed. So they're not going to receive this. If you do it by accident, you can always restore it. One question that we get a lot is how to export the data of who received this. And the answer is you don't. Um, you There isn't a way for the system to export recipient data because there's you're sending this to current occupant. There's no, um, uh, the, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, um, but there's no buyer or owner information, I should say, um, on who these, who's in these properties. So there's no data to export in that regard. But let's say you are wanting to remove people. Hmm, excuse me. From this recipient list. You'll notice no matter how many of these I remove, our number stays the same. So it's just finding, might be hard to tell. It looks like if I remove one, another dot appears over here because that's the next person closest in the radius that's going to receive one. Now, another question we get often when looking at these is why some of the homes in the neighborhood are skipped and different ones further out are being selected. People can sign up through the post office to be on a no spam list, very similar to the um, do, uh, National Do Not Call Registry for phone calls. And if they've registered for that, then the system won't allow you to send one of these to their address. So there isn't a way around that unless you print something and hand deliver it to someone you know, if that's what you're wanting to do. Um, but the system won't let you mail direct mailers if someone is on that list to help keep you compliant. You don't have to worry about that part. So once your targeting is done and you're ready to go, you hit next. And now we have our preview here. Front and back. And it looks like the preview 
had initially, you know, cut off, I think at the word breakfast, but now because we've pushed through and are on the final preview, we can see that it did in fact stop where we wanted it to. This is just the larger preview. So if you wanted to save a PDF version of what was sent out, you can always download it and save it or print it straight from here. Just keep in mind if you do that, like this isn't going to be an alternative so that you can download this and custom print because they're all gonna be addressed to you at the office. We also get um, questions like, hey, I created a mailer and I downloaded the PDF, but when I go to print it, how do I change the address? Well, you don't, unless you're, you know, putting a, a sticker over the top of these as after printing. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Does the system also filter out people on the cease and desist list? I am not 100% sure, but I am fairly certain that it does. Um, but that's a great question. And I will, um, if you want to email our support team, we can double check on that for you. So we have our preview up here, and then we have our order summary telling you four by six postcards with your estimated um, total that included postage. And then this goes over kind of what to expect processing wise when you place this order. So same day processing, if you submit your order before 3 p.m. on a business day, your mailers will go to production that same day in a fulfillment center nearest to your targeted area. And then the post office distribution, your cards will be inserted into the post office mail stream within two business days. And your estimated delivery your mailers are estimated to arrive in the mailboxes of the targeted recipients in four to six business days. Once the order is submitted, you will be provided a more accurate estimate. Uh, so yes, the class recording gets updated, hopefully once it's done processing by end of business day on the day that it's recorded. Um, so you can check back for that, or if you want to email our support team, we can get you uh, the previous month's recording that goes over mostly the same information um, if you don't want to wait for this one to get done processing. And then payment, you have your email address here, and if you have... Uh, payment information on file, then it should populate for you here, or you can type that in if you haven't preset that up. And you can also schedule this for a different day to go out. So let's say, let's say today is Monday, but I want, actually, no, let's say I created this today, but I want to schedule it to start processing on Monday so that it can be hopefully to the mailboxes of my recipients by the weekend. Uh, yes, I will put the support email in the chat again for you. All right, and once you either schedule that or you've entered the card information and you hit make a payment that will get sent to real mailers. 
And this will then say processing. And once they get everything processed and sent to the post office, that's when you'll have your date sent. And the number of recipients and leads will start updating as people receive those. All right, guys, I'm going to go through another example. We're going to create campaign again. Direct mail. Select our goal. Let's do event awareness create campaign. So this is going to be one of the options for not needing a property specific. So it's starting from blank, selecting a template. And I'm just adding information here so you can see where on the template that it's being added. Photo. This is going to be an upload situation. So I have one saved just on my desktop. So all I did was drag and drop. You can also browse if you want to open the finder feature and just find that that way. And then again, agent information here. I'm going to fix the phone number, save. I got my check mark here. And then I added here, let us know what type of dessert you'd prefer. So for tracking, adding that QR code, maybe I have a landing page where I created a Google form so that people could select which type of dessert they want from our options. We're going to pretend like that's what that is. And maybe not because it's not. Adding it to our preview. Okay, we'll look at that on our big preview, see if that updated. I know Thursdays is a day that KW works on updating things in the system, so sometimes it can be a little delayed. Um, so again, market center information, pulling from your marketing profile, uh, city, state, and zip code is one line in your marketing profile. So you're always, when you're creating this, going to want to come in here and select. Again, I don't know this off the top of my head. <laughs> and verify. So we have that updated targeting. So instead of local targeting, 
because that's what we just did on the last one based on the property address. Based on targeting, we're going to target my database so that you can invite any previous clients. And then from here, you'll be able to just select any contacts that have a legit address or at least formatted on their contact. So all of these either don't have addresses or don't have a complete mailing address in their contact card. So that's one thing too with the system. If there's not a valid address that the system recognizes in your contacts information, it won't allow you to select them when targeting your database. That way you're not paying for mailers that never end up going anywhere. Um, there's another question in the chat. My Instagram business doesn't connect with campaigns. That I'm going to suggest you email our support team so that they can help look into your system specifically and troubleshoot what might be going on. Um, so for that, uh, I would I would stick to emailing our support team. So I'm going to at least select one here. So once you've selected who this is going to go to, you'll start to see all of those people here. So if you accidentally added someone that you're like, oh, I haven't worked with them or they don't want mailing, whatever, I can just hit this little X and that removes them. You can also, when adding contacts here, you can filter. So if you have tags on your clients based on, you know, whether they've been previous clients or however you tag your database, you can filter from there to make this part easier. And because you're selecting who it's going to here, you're not really going to change your quantity. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna go anywhere. So it's just gonna be shipped to you at the office. Um, And then again, depending on what you want to pay for postage class, you can do that. And then preview and pay, since there's no configuring, since we selected the addresses, these are gonna go to, I'll go to, once that loads the main preview, see if that QR code updated this time or if there was a little blip there. There we go, QR code made it. And then it's really hard to see, but this did actually put our client's name and the address it's going to. It's not gonna do that for everyone. Um, but we only selected to send this to one person. So that's just what the preview shows. So it's not going to say current occupant. It will actually um, address the contacts based on how you have them in your database. There's our view larger button. There we go. And then again, gives you your order total and then your card information, and then you can send that through.
All right, guys, I know I went through that last example kind of quickly, um, but I wanted to make sure that we covered the differences. Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you got a lot of new information out of this. Feel free, again, once this is uploaded, it'll be on our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and search Scott Leroy Marketing, you'll find our whole channel here where you can find previous uploads. We have different classes, different tip videos. You can also use the search function here. So if you don't want to wait for the previous or for this class to be done uploading, you can check out direct mailers from last month, get mostly the same information, all that kind of thing. Or if you don't want to search, you can always email us. Or if you have any other questions, um, we can send you a helpful video um, for what you're looking for.